Hi everybody, I'm here for another pick of cards, this time two choices, and it's advice on your current situation to see uh, what universe or whatever you believe in, spirit, the divine, what messages can come through for you to help you with your current situation and per perhaps give you more clarity on the aspects of it. So I will put the timestamps down below as usual and you'll also have the what I call the number from the divine, the angel numbers that you can look up for even more information about uh, maybe what you need to focus on at the moment or what could be um, helpful in your current situation. So, I hope the lightning is going to be okay because I know this kind of puts a small glare on the cards. I'm going to start off with uh, pile one, obviously, with the purple diamond, and then we'll jump into pile two. So, I've prepared some cards that I haven't seen, and I'm going to be able to use a new tarot to that um, I find very handy and very efficient. Um, it's on trial in the sense that I need to test out oracles before I know if they can stay or go. And uh, for those that might be interested, it's a French um, publishing house, Le Lotus et l'Elephant. They do very nice things. So if you're into indie decks, but that are kind of globally produced and available on, on Amazon and they could be shipped overseas, you can look up uh, Le Mini Tarot, Rider Waite Smith. And um, yeah, I don't know why I'm saying this, but that's that'll be part of the intro. So if you're not interested, skip that. So advice on your current situation for group one. Oh, it's something about family, cancer, energy. <sighs> we have, um, I have my Uranus. Uranus, okay. We have the Capricorn with the 10th house. Okay, there's a lot. Oh, no, no. There's a lot to unpack here. Let me take some time to dive in the cards and say what they have, what I can see for you. Something is being unrooted um, or, or taken out. The roots are taken out. Just like when you, I don't know if you can say unroot a tree. I don't know if that's a verb, if that's a word. But um, yeah, it's déraciné. Let me check. Let's do some French, French English translation around here. French class, high school French class level stuff. Unrooted. That doesn't sound very English to me, but could be. Uprooted. Unrooted. That's actually a word. Uprooted. I feel is more of. Um, I, I, I feel it sounds better in the situation. I don't know if it actually does, but you're long you're you're longing for a home. And I'm not talking about physical home. I feel you're struggling with feeling at home in a relationship or uh, within your work. I think you have a hard time finding your place. Do you hear that? I'm recording at night time. It's nearly midnight and I'm in the worst kind of part of my city. It's so noisy at night. <sighs> That's another story, but I'd ask for me confirmation. I don't know if you heard them kind of woo, like, so yeah, I might be in the right, on the right track with this. So I feel that uh, you're, you you feel that you're looking for a home and you can't find it. And I think there's something to do with not being able to find your place, to find where you fit in life, in your life, and maybe more generally in life at large, like what's your part Maybe you like a drive because you don't really know why you're here, so to speak. So you might be kind of waiting secretly for this sort of calling, this come to Jesus moment where everything would be kind of highlighted and you would know exactly what to do with your life. And you're waiting for this kind of, yeah, come to Jesus moment that, sorry guys, um, it rarely I, I can't say it never happens because that would be a general gen, over generalization, but let's say that it barely ever happens. And if it does, usually the sort of breakthrough you're sort of wishing for happens because it's actually uh, the result, the consequence of putting in some actions and making some decisions. So um, you might be looking for answers, but all I can tell you, and I think the reason why I'm not going to be able to give much really um, 
deep specific message is first because this is a general message so it cannot like you know speak to everybody in the same way but also because you need to figure it out i cannot mash the food kind of chew the food and give it to you i cannot mash it up you have to it's like i can show you the ingredients that could be useful but i cannot prepare the meal for you that's what i feel when i see the cards like that because Uranus is about those changes and blockages. And I think something has really crumbled in your life. And you might feel that what has crumbled was something that you thought could never crumble. It also gives me the feels, the, the energy of, you know, when you grow up and you realize that your parents are not the superheroes you thought they were. Because with the imagination of the child, you kind of envision things that match your reality as you know, and the reality is kind of adding up and on the same level as your level of understanding of life. And as you grow older, it expands. And I feel this expansion is costing you because you're forced or put in a position where you have to see things from a different perspective. And you might have to come to a point where you need to sit down with yourself and kind of make the inventory of what's working and what has failed and also being able to let go of things that are not that you cannot change at this point and i think it's also taking responsibility for your own choices and decisions and understanding that to some degree um yes they led you to where you're at but there was also the external factors that you have no control over that played a part in that and you cannot beat yourself up for things that were out of your control i think there's something about wanting to control the image that you give out to people maybe you were big into your status some sort of uh, prestige some sort of wanting to be someone because you thought that that would validate you and you realize that it doesn't what life is also showing you at the moment i feel and i think this will be a confirmation if you've you already sense it in your life it feels that life has stopped you from kind of um what's the word um to persevere in a direction that was not meant for you so if you've been blocked if things completely crumbled and turned out and turn out completely not the way you expected them to be it's because there's something better out there but you need to take a different path to be able to discover what it is so you might not quite be on the right track with some of the decisions you made you made i am um, sleep maybe it has to do with a relationship that you've invested in that doesn't work out i feel that with the two flowers kind of opposing each other and the card being in reversed you might have wanted to make a match with someone and thought you could um um i guess what's the word find a balance and make your differences a strength and something that would make you both grow and you're realizing that you're too different or maybe a job maybe i i didn't notice there was a third flower um it could also say about you know it's funny how in relationships and especially in love settings in love relationships it's not one plus one equals two it's usually one plus one equals three not saying that there's a third party involved, but there's you, the other person, and you bringing yourselves together will kind of create this third entity, which is the couple, the relationship. That's a sort of autonomous organism that you both feed and that kind of has a life of its own. And that's how the couple is kind of created. I feel there's something in this dynamic that is not working. You are investing something in a situation, a relationship, or a work situation, but it's not being equally um, reciprocated to you. And you feel something is not fair and not balanced. And I think that is what, that cue you in, and it kind of, I think, gave you the sort of premise to understanding what's behind it and the bigger problem that has to be solved for you to find back clarity. And um, 
And the change here is not something that happened overnight. Maybe the the breakthrough or the the breaking down perhaps happens. You felt maybe that it happened fast and overnight. But I don't believe in th things just coming out out of the blue when it comes to relationships. Like, and I don't say this to shame you or make you feel worse about yourself. But it's just I don't believe in you know my husband just left me like. We've been together for five years, and he he left me all of a sudden. Took his suitcase and never and never came back. There are always sort of maybe subtle signs, but I don't believe in things just happening out of the blue. But it's maybe because we don't want to see what's really going on, and we put this folder, this blindfold on our eyes because we don't want to see what's actually about to happen so i feel that what is actually starting to free up some spaces and areas of your life you kind of feel that it's a punishment at the moment but actually it's just a way to help you change gear in a di direction that's more suited more that will suit you and help you become a person that um that will feel way more at peace and balanced so what you see as something horrible is actually something that's going to turn out empowering for you yeah let me drink a little bit thirsty The, I'm just going to take three cards because I think it sums up beautifully your reading. It's about taking a new opportunity, taking a leap of faith to become more mature emotionally with the King of Cups and being empowered and not feeling broken down by, by your circumstances, but finding what is empowering about it. It's funny to see that obviously the Kings are less powerful and potent in their energy and the meaning that they bring to the table be because they cannot really compete with the emperor the emperor is like out of the kings in the tarot league but it's here to bring you a message that through actually being more emotionally li emotionally literate and by actually acknowledging and letting your emotion flow and letting things actually really feeling the pain really going through the feelings and just you gotta heal it you gotta feel it to heal it that's a common saying and for you it's exactly what it is about if you repress what's actually under the surface that just wants to be said you'll stay stuck the main focus here is to heal yourself and emotionally um, be more present towards yourself and through that you will birth this sort of life change you're probably looking for and wanting to happen and 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 you'll feel you'll find the emperor fought to be on this at this place or at least had to show that he had the skills to be where he is right and both of this like characters hold things in their hands they hold the power they they're they're emotionally they hold the world and you know the, the the it's a more of a phallic power representation the yang energy and the yin energy which is the world and here it's the phallic sort of scepter and also the cup which is a more feminine energy so how can i give and how can i receive and how can i give myself and how can i receive from other people and here the next level is how can i actually rule and be a sort of role model for people around me and I mastered the skills of giving and receiving so now I can rightfully claim what what's mine and lead my life from a place of empowerment and authenticity because for me the emperor is not lying he's not bullshitting about who he is he is he's not faking anything and I think that's what you're walking towards too but it's going to require a lot of honesty and bravery to be able to see in what areas or in what ways you're sort of censoring yourself and sabotaging your own progress but the new birth for you the new opportunity is coming slow steady wins the race and it's 
a new door is about to open, but for you to be able to approach this next part of your journey, you need to become more aware of your own emotions and how they impact your life and your and your mind and your your mental health and how can you be more of what you want the person you want to become interesting read i felt drawn i didn't want to take that but we're going to end up taking that because i like to finish up usually not always but on a sort of message cause and effect wasn't i talking about it at the beginning of the reading cause and effect you are aware that the love you create in your thoughts is the is an agent of change and the foundation of your results emotional balance great so self-love is key here all right, group one, I hope that was out of service. If you want to deep a bit further in astrology, forecast astrology and energy healing, I have a Patreon where you can find more contents that I don't publish on the channel. And um, I thank you for your time. And I'm just going to straight away jump to group two. For the people that chose the blue diamond with the number two, the group two, I forgot the divine numbers. Okay, I'll do it for group one, and then I'll do it for group two. Actually, I'm just going to note them down, you know what? but I'm going to do it for you. So, group one, it was, I'm going to write that down, group one. One, two, two, four. For group two, what do we have for group two? Angel number or number from the divine, it will just go with it'll be, it'll be written in the choose your pile section for you. It's one, three, two, five. One, three, two, five. You can look that up for more clarity on your situation. Let's see what the cards are for you Pisces energy with the 12th house, second house with Taurus energy, and a Capricorn energy. Oh, this has to do with you needing to think out of the box and being too rigid in your thinking. You might be stubborn by nature or you might be in a situation where you don't want to back down or you feel that if you change your position on the given situation, you will appear maybe weak or unstable or unreliable. And so I feel that you, you kind of got caught up in, a, in your own game of wanting to appear as uh, a person that's strong and reliable and that kind of holds their own and takes charge of everything and is in take like in charge of business this has the saturian saturn energy that goes with it which also tells us about you're in a stage of your life where the lesson that's quite i feel hard to accept and to swallow is your own limits that you're not limitless and uh, almighty and you're facing your own limits i think this is the part of the sort of shadow work that you've been put through at the moment is that you're i feel that you're you're how can i phrase this it's your ambition is actually hindering your evolution more than helping you mature as a person so i think you might be very witted very greedy and you might really want to set goals and make them don't like achieve them to the point where you forget that what's really important is the process and the journey rather than the end goal and the end result and i feel you're missing the point by wanting to focus on something that is not as important as you think it is we could see also problems within a business by mismanagement and not being able to um, kind of take care of your finances. The, th the second house is not only about finances. It, it's also about um, how you handle your lifestyle and what you prioritize that has to do with your health, uh, your, your, your comfort or the lack of comfort. 
um, and material things, and also uh, what you prioritize also as a as a, cons a consumer. Do you say that? Do you want to promote a, a, a world with you know kind of brands that have an ethic and that do things with respect and you know with a sort of um, values you know and and a sort of eco-friendly mindset or is it something that you barely ever thought about and i think it's time for you also to question you're coming at a point in your time where you're questioning maybe the future of the planet or of your own children if you have any and you're wondering you know maybe it's time to wonder what kind of world you're going to live behind you whether you have children whether you don't have children whether you want them or not you know, even if you don't have children or even people that don't want to have children at all, you have sisters, you have nephews, you have brothers and younger siblings and you see people around you that have children. So even if it's not your children, it might be, you know, the world at large. And I feel that there's a sort of defeated utopian person within you that would want to make this place this world a better place and to actually provide solution concrete solution in a world that feel that is sort of going in this ray and kind of self-destructing itself and i feel that what is going to help you navigate through this phase of your life is actually putting into action those ideas those there's nothing naive or you shouldn't let people belittle you for wanting to make this world a better place and for even being a dreamer and an idealist because it's only through people with a vision that the world actually changes. When the vision actually is shared by a community or a group of people that are crazy enough, mad enough to want to make this change happen, that's usually when it happens. And never underestimate the sort of ripple effect of the community networking and I guess the power of social networks and the good and the light attribute and the light aspects is that it's become super easy to share info causes to raise money for foundations for non-governmental organization and stuff like that and I think it's maybe if you feel drawn to do any of those things or to work in a local charity or to want to launch maybe a product that has to do with environment or with improving people's lives I think it's the right time you're 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 ready um you're ready to to, to do that and then there are you have bad habits um whether it's health food or money habits it's time to nip that shit in the bud so that you stop doing it for good so maybe rehab in a in, in to some way kind of you know detox and maybe changing your outlook on some on, on some of your circumstances or some of the things that are, are happening it's like get out of this kind of pessimistic um, state of mind to try to make a decision you know and um, with the Capricorn here it also feels like if something are revolting and you're you, you find it revolting and there are really things that you, you, you cannot bear and that you find outrageous. Make that change. Start with you and this will, uh, well, this will help other people do the same. It's time to share. And I think having a community or joining something where people have share a common ideal and want to help other people, the sort of benevolence that goes with wanting to help others and help yourself in the process would be great for you. What is what I call right, rightful indignation when something just you find this something downright revolting or about yourself or you know in the system and you want to change it then use the anger as a, 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 a mechanism to help you push forward mm, that's an interesting combo we have the knight of pentacles with the high priestess what a what an interesting combo it's really correlating with the 12th house which is all about 
Pisces energy, which is the sort of dreamy um, beliefs, the belief system, what kind of, what do I buy in, what sort of reality. It's a bit like in the Matrix, in the first one, do you want to take the blue pill or do you want to take the red pill? And it feels that you, you want to take the pill that makes you more woke and that makes you seize truth, like that makes you seize the world for what it is and to see the ugliness of it, but also the beauty that stems from it. It's going beneath the black and white thinking for you too. And it's funny that we move from a night to a page. So it's like getting out through conscious or unconscious sort of processing within your brain to not question what you thought you were so sure about, which is pretty uncomfortable, but also an act of humility and of showing, of humbling you. Maybe life is trying to humble you at the moment, even though you might take it really personally and really harshly to some degree to see that all your sorts of ideals or preconceived ideas are just crumbling because they're not, they need to be updated like a software. And I feel with the page of coins, it's all about maybe I don't know, maybe I don't have all the answers, but maybe the point of life is not to have the answers, it's just to remain asking the right questions so that you can grow, you know, as a person and you also can help the world and your community and the people around you, your environment grow also as a sort of um, global thing, you know, global environment. So remain in the question rather than desperately be looking for the answer. It's actually the basis, I think, I believe, of the Kabbalah. I've kind of started to dig into that. Um, and it's, you know, as soon as you get an answer, you close a door. You know, you close down, you, you put a wall around you. Questions free you um, and make you expand. But um, answers or wanting to have the answers is what closes down your consciousness. Because then you put a wall and brick in the wall and the, the the idea is to kind of try to be as wall free as possible so remaining and questioning things might be asking why the rules from this japanese researcher or psychologist you can type it probably japanese psychologist uh, the three three whys why say ask a question and the first, like, ask why you think this, come with an answer. Why do you say that? Come with an answer. And why do you say that? And the more you dig into your own answers and you start questioning your own answers, the more you will know about yourself, the more truth will unfold from that. And the freer your mind will get. Because the more you do that and you practice the art of questioning, and I'm not talking about putting yourself in self-doubt and why, like victim mode. I'm talking just an honest kind of assessment of why you have those beliefs. It will free you because you will train your brain to realize that you don't need the answer. But what's important for you, your, you to learn for your le um, learning curve is the process by which you came to uh, uh, answering the question. It's not so much the answer in itself, is the process of being able to formulate the answer and what it's telling you about your own self. It's about accepting that you're just a student of life and that we all are, and that what you thought might have separated you from other people there's a sort of bringing back humanity in the sense that that's why I like hearing I've been binge watching podcasts on um, what's the name of the channel if I can promote good stuff I'll do it gladly I'm about to watch Gabor mate the childhood lie that's ruining all our lives and it's the di diary of a CEO the interviewer, I, I didn't pick up his name, but is brilliant. This guy is just brilliant. And um, if you haven't checked his stuff on YouTube, or he probably is also on other platforms, but I'm a YouTube gal, you might want to check that out because um, that's really enlightening. And especially when you feel alone and in pain and uh, lost, 
which was not my case, no, but if you're in this energy, because some of you might be in this sort of, what, what, what's the point, you know, what the fuck should I do with my life? Um, I feel that if you're in a sort of crisis, sort of existential crisis, or feeling really disrayed by what's going on in your life or in the world, maybe you're concerned about that. Being able to hear people share the stories, and you, you could actually go in meetups and meetings or just talk more openly with people around you with things that actually are dear to you but that you might not be sharing right now because you don't want to be seen or portrayed as someone that's too vulnerable or too cheesy or too idealistic or too pessimistic. But sharing stories is one of the most powerful things because what I find inspiring by uh, the, the podcast of The Dairy, I can, I'm slightly dyslexic guys and it's, it's late. It's not the dairy, we're not talking about milk and cheese, but the diary of a CEO. Hearing inspirational stories about people that have gone through the same predicaments as you and that have been able to make something out of it that's actually um, fruitful and turning what was, you know, the, the pain, the loss, the failure, the self-doubt, the questioning, the... The, the feeling like giving up, like for instance, I, I actually, um, I listened to the Seth um, Rajan uh, episode he did and it's so interesting, first of all, because I've always liked Seth Rajan, like I think any uh, pothead, like <laughs> any person, I don't do that anymore, you know, I'm clean of everything, sober and clean. But any kind of legit pothead um, in my teens um, came across one, at least, you know, one Seth Rogen, uh, Rogen movie or, you know, with J James Franco, which was his acolyte, I think. I don't know if you say that in English, acolyte. Um, I could see another aspect of Seth Rogen that I had never seen because obviously I don't know the guy, but I mean, it's it's a side of people and especially people that have succeeded in their own industry or in their own way and we see a more kind of vulnerable side and it gives back it humanity to public figures or um, people that are knowledgeable in their fields and you can see the human behind you know what is the agenda that's pushed forward and the person behind the work they're endorsing, if it makes sense. And for you, it's that maybe to some degree, it's time for you to share what you can and what you have to share, um, but not for the f the sake of wanting to make money or for public recognition. It's for this act of pure kindness with no strings attached. And also accepting how much you know and realizing that the more you know, the less you actually realize you know, and it's okay. I went a bit philosophical. I usually don't go there so much, but for tonight, it was what came out. Let's give a final message. I hope that's out of service. There's something about blue, blue, blue. Speaking the truth, throat, throat chakra. Ownership. Your knowledge, your misdeeds and accomplishments alike and learn to love them all as lessons. Wasn't I talking about being a student of life? Yeah, I guess tonight I am pretty aligned. Evolution. You realize that obstacles are merely lessons on your path to love. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it here. Um, if you wish to subscribe to the channel, support me. If you feel like sharing the videos, I never say it, say it, but if you feel it can help someone. And I can also provide you other types of content on Patreon if you wish to check that out. Um, thank you for your time and for being here. And, um, you know, be nice to yourself and realize that you're doing you know, a lot and you're, you, you know, it's not vanity to praise yourself for what you're doing right because it's so easy to see what you're doing wrong and beating yourself up for it. So compassion and kindness is 
you know, maybe what's missing for you to actually free yourself from your own, the burden of your own mind. So, yeah, be kind to yourself. You're doing the best you can. All right. I hope you have a great day or night, and I'll see you around for other recordings, other pick-a-cards. Bye!